How's it going people? It's your boy AC back again with another episode. So this weekend we had UFC 297, which was headlined between Sean Strickland and Dracos Duplessis. Dracos, he was able to secure the victory in a split decision and is now the new middleweight champion. Some people were screaming robbery. Strickland fans, you know, they are up in arms at the moment. It's all going down. All jokes aside, with Sean Strickland, he came out and he does what you expect him to do dominates with the jab, utilizing his Philly shell, comes forward. But you know, in that lies its own issues. You know, this is mixed martial arts and it's called mixed martial arts for a reason. You know, you need to be able to mix things up well. One size doesn't fit all. So for what worked for him in his fight against Israel Adesanya, wasn't necessarily gonna be the same going in up against Duplessis who, you know, had a different style. And as we know, styles make fights. So in this one, it was a closely contested fight. Sean Strickland did do a lot of good things, utilizing his jab. He did start to fade between the middle rounds and then it came on strong in the fifth and final round. Some would say too little too late. Dracos Duplessis did what we expected him to do. He mixed in the takedowns with the striking and just offered a lot of variety. And sometimes that variety is what catches the eye of the judges. There were questions surrounding his cardio. Could he go the distance? And you know, he held up. We did see signs of fatigue from Sean Strickland as well. And his cardio does always hold up, but it holds up because he has a very conservative style. He uses a jab, doesn't really throw many kicks, doesn't really shoot for many takedowns, really tries to control with that boxing range and, and, and his just forward controlled pressure and hoping to counter. But with, you know, Dracos style and his ability to, you know, to pose other questions, I always felt that Dracos could edge a close decision. Strickland, he did control the first two rounds with the jab. Dracos definitely secured rounds three and four for sure. And Strickland definitely taking rounds one and five and saying that, you know, potentially that round two you know, could have gone either way. It was a tight affair, it was a close decision. Sean Strickland shot himself in the foot. With just relying on the boxing alone, you're really limiting, you know, what problems you can pose, giving yourself other opportunities to potentially catch your opponent with that counter because they're expecting potentially something else. You know, you go back to when Khabib dropped Connor. Khabib fakes the shot and then comes over the top with the overhand, catching McGregor clean. And this one was a closely contested fight. Both guys took damage, visible damage, which you could see by the end of the fight. You know, Sean Trickland had a cut that had opened up at the midway point in the fight. But Dracos, his eyes were both shut by the end of the fight. And I just feel that this one was swayed just by the lack of variety of what Sean Strickland was bringing to the fight. Yeah, he threw the occasional kick here and there, but you know, otherwise it doesn't really do enough, which is why I didn't really anticipate him having a long reign. If, you, if you're able to, to get the takedown, and I get it, some will say, but what about when you take an opponent down, you can't just score the takedown, the damage, control time, all these things play a factor. But you know, in a fight which was very fine margins and, and finally contested, you're looking for really the small things to really pick apart as to how to decide who took what round. And, and the whole judging thing, you know, it's very, it's not perfect as we know. We've seen some, some off decisions before and I'm sure we'll see some again. But in terms of was this a robbery, I wouldn't say so. It could have gone either. The way I just feel that Drake has slightly edged it for me. Sean Strickland, he will come again. It's not necessarily going to be the fight we're going to see next, but these guys will collide again. It was a fun fight, and, and it would be interesting to see how they both adjust their strategy should they fight again in terms of what's next for him. Potentially, if Adesanya and Drakus are going to be tied up, then I would like to see Hamza and, and Strickland. That would be a fun fight to say the least. But yeah, Drakus Duplessis, you know, he, he came strong, and it'll be interesting to see how he matches up with Adesanya. And I imagine that will be next potentially you know his cardio did hold up but i do see some vulnerabilities and i just feel that in that fight i would probably be leaning towards adesanya um in that one with drake because it was very linear he knew what to expect with adesanya you're gonna get a lot more feints there's gonna be a lot more be a lot more of the unexpected so it remains to be seen so moving on we also on the same night we had another potential you know, controversial judging decision, which was up in Liverpool between uh, Natasha Jonas and Michaela Mayer. And this one, for me, again, um, it was a very closely contested fight. Again, some of the same, similar questions, you know, surrounding Natasha for me was, you know, would she be able to, you know, at 39 years of age, be able to handle the pressure and still come strong in the later rounds, you know, and just handle that, the amount of volume. And, and for me, Natasha did start off very strong. She started fast and, and that worked to her advantage in the eyes of the judges at least. But, you know, uh, <laughs> 
Michaela Mayer, she grew into that fight. She got some of the more eye-catching shots. She put a lot of volume in. She definitely took the later stages of the fight for me. She definitely won the, the final, the last round. But where Michaela Mayer, and, and again, this is, you know, when you're you know, going across overseas and probably vice versa, had this fight been in the United States, it would have probably have gone the other way. And it should not really come down to home advantage because at the end of the day, these guys are the only two people in the ring. That shouldn't really play a factor in my opinion. This fight was closer than it needed to be. And I feel like Michaela Mayer, she shot herself in the foot. She shot herself in the foot because she just didn't really set anything up. Yes, she's moved up two weight classes um, and this was her first fight at 147 pounds. She shot herself in the foot because she just didn't set anything up. She didn't utilize any feints. She just kept really laboring forward um, and, and trying to just impose, impose herself very flat-footed. Whether that was to do with her being, you know, uh, uncomfortable at the weight and feeling heavy at the weight, you never know. There were at times where she had Natasha, but Natasha was able to regroup and catch her with a counter just because, you know, nothing was being set up. So it almost became quite predictable. Um, and the match was very, it was very continuous throughout. You know, both guys went at it. Um, it was a war to say the least. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, Michaela Mayer's team, you know, they shot her in the foot as, you know, she wasn't the champion and she doesn't have a rematch clause in the contract so you know it's going to be a it's going to be a difficult one to see how she gets that one back so natasha jonas she retains her ibf welterweight title and you know she has definitely done herself proud you can't fought the you can't fought her heart she fought against the odds and you know i wouldn't say again i wouldn't say robbery i would just say very closely contested it could have gone either way i felt like it did go the wrong way but hey it is what it is but anyway guys that's it for me for now i will be back so stay tuned stay blessed stay locked don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys soon peace